Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and you might have heard the recommendation not to use static variables or methods. Is that really good advice though? Here's why people say that, but of course, with some nuance. Let's take some sample code to illustrate this. I have a method I created called is 18 years or older, where our argument we take is a date time, which is your birth date. What I'm doing is I'm just adding 18 years to that birth date, and then I'm returning true if that date, that specific date, is less than or equals to today's date. That code looks pretty straightforward, so what's the issue? Before I get into that, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. The issue is this method is 18 years or older is not deterministic. It's not deterministic because I'm using datetime.utc now. Every time this code runs, datetime.utc now is gonna give me back a different value. You'll oftentimes hear people talk about pure functions, but really what they're talking about is the characteristic of that pure function being deterministic. So what that means is if I pass a specific value, I'm always gonna get back the exact same result for that specific value of my parameters. And we can see with these tests that my method is not deterministic. I created these tests yesterday, and now this test is failing when yesterday it was working. The reason is I had a test called not over 18 where I was passing in today's date. Yesterday, this date, no, it was not 18 years ago. Today, it is exactly 18 years ago, and it is true. That's why this test is failing. So does that make static methods or variables bad? No, it just makes ones that are non-deterministic their usage be non-deterministic, like my method, and therefore, in my particular case, this might be harder to test or harder to reason about. But I can still manage this. I created two more tests that instead of specifying a specific date, are also using date time UTC now, so we can manage this so it's always gonna work. Here's another example where I have a place order class and I'm calling the process method on it. This returns me back a new order and it has a property called processed, which is a date time to tell me when the order was processed. In my test here, a lot of assertion libraries will start doing this where it says, okay, what's the date time? Well, I'm saying, I don't really know it exactly. I assume it's right now, but I can also specify some type of tolerance. Let's say, hey, within the last second or so, that that's actually what the date is because I don't know exactly what the date is because we're non-deterministic. Is it that big of an issue? In this example, probably not, but in other contexts, it absolutely is. Take for example, that our place order if you place an order on a Friday and it's processed, that you actually get a 50% discount. So half off Fridays, how would I exactly I test this at all, especially if it's non-deterministic? So a way we can do that is actually make it deterministic. So from here, my place order is actually taking a fake date time input. What we can see here is our time provider. This is provided in .NET. It's an abstract class that we can implement. And I'm just basically taking it as an argument, we're injecting it into our process method and doing our 50% off. But when I actually deal with our test, I can provide it the specific date for our fake date. So we can see our fake date now. I'm just taking the date time offset that we're specifying and that's what we're using when we actually call UTC now from it. So that way I can make it deterministic. No matter what, our date that we're gonna be specifying of now is gonna be this particular date on Friday, and we know that our total is gonna to be 50% off. This should illustrate a few things. The first is the tight coupling. Using that static method, you have less flexibility because you can't actually override the behavior. And if that behavior of that static method that you're using or variable, whatever the case may be, property, if it's non-deterministic, that can make your own method non-deterministic, and that can be very difficult for testing or just reasoning about its behavior. Another reason people say to avoid static variables is because they're global. Okay, great, they're global. What does that have to do with anything? It's because if you have a global variable, you don't necessarily know when it was initialized, what the state is. Is it in a state that you can actually use it? So my example here, I have this global class that I've made, and I have a static cache property. The thing is, is that null? Has that been initialized? It's my cache. Do I actually need to make sure that my global cache, like do I actually need to connect to this thing first? Is it already connected? That's m predominantly the, the issue people have with global properties or global static variables 
is because of the state and not knowing in a given context what the state is or if it's the state that you'll actually need. And what we're talking about is that static variable is mutable and that's causing a lot of our issue. It's also an issue if you're a multi-threaded environment. I have a static cache with a collection of customers that is not thread safe. So when I do a parallel four, because I'm doing these concurrently, when I actually run this, this actually fails because I can't deal with this collection that's not thread safe. If I was using this globally, I would need to make this thread safe. So are static variables terrible and you should never use them? No, not really, depends on your context. In my last example, in .NET, there's thread safe collections. You can use that, problem solved. In my first scenario there, where you kind of had mutable state, yeah, that's not great, especially if there's some temporal aspect where you have to call one method before you call another, and you have no idea whether that method's called, it can get a little hairy. It depends how you're using them. So jumping back to my cache example, I changed my customers to be a concurrent bag, which is thread safe, and guess what? Problem solved, test pass. We don't have to worry about our kind of multi-threaded environment concurrency here. And I create another example, just talking about being deterministic. I have a static method here, miles to kilometers, where you take in the number of miles and it's always gonna give you back the exact same value depending on the parameters that you pass. So hopefully I illustrated some of the reasons why people say that the avoid static methods are variables. You're tightly coupled to them. You have no ability to override their behavior, especially if they're non-deterministic and that's causing you issues. If you have things like static variables that ultimately end up being globals, you need to think about, okay, is their state changing? Can I deal with this if I'm in a multi-threaded environment? Is there that temporal aspect where, is it null? Do I need to call something first? Or my example with concurrency, does that cause an issue? Is this thread safe? There's a lot of issues, especially with debugging around that, and that's why people try to avoid it. But of course, static variables aren't terrible and you don't need to avoid them like the plague. They have their utility. To me, especially around if you're making them deterministic and if you're in a multi-threaded environment, making sure you can deal with that concurrency because there is a lot of utility around them. Now get in the comments and let me know your horror stories about using statics. I know I have some, so I know you have some horror stories or maybe they are actually good usages. Either way, let me know in the comments. And if you like topics like this around software design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can chat with other software developers about software design, architecture, domain-driven design, those types of topics. The link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.